Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Scott and this is my first ever Let's Play video and it's going to be of Lemmings. Lemmings is a very old game as you can see from the um, year down here where it's, that's 1991 in Roman numerals there, which that's probably pretty obvious, but I'm just going kind of ranting here, so let's go ahead and start the game. And this is going to be our first level. It's called Just Dig. So we're going to just dig and we'll see what that means here in a second. This game is kind of different from most other games where you have a player character or something that you control. In Lemmings, you don't really do that. You, you don't have any actual control over these guys here. These are the Lemmings. Um, the Lemmings only walk in a straight line until they run into something. It, it, as you can see, these guys are going off to the left here. Whenever they reach this wall over here, they're going to bump into that and turn around. The goal is to get as many of them as possible to this exit right here. And to clear a level, you have to get a certain number of them into the exit. I'm going to pause the game right here for a second and show off down here at the bottom this is the only way that you have to interact with these fellows up here the the point of the game is even though you have no direct control over them you can assign them different tasks like right here we had we had one of the lemmings dig a hole through here by assigning them the digger task and as you can see there's a nine above it right now it was a ten whenever we started the level you have a finite number of times you can assign tasks to a lemming um, the digger task which we used here continues until continues they continue digging until they either drop through the ground like they did here or they reach something impassable such as steel or some other substance that they can't dig through or in case until they dig down off the bottom of the level which is always fun and should be avoided um, but anyway, down here are the tasks, and they kind of, at the beginning of the game, they give you a few different, um, they give you a few different tasks that you have to concentrate on for each level, and the, um, like, the, the first level here we just focused on digging, um, the next level we'll be using the floaters, which are these over here, and then so on and so forth through the first seven levels of the game. Um, there's also down here a few other tools, like over here we have the, the plus and the minus, which control the rate at which lemmings come through the chute. And we have the pause button here, and then this button will um, explode any lemmings which are still at, in the level whenever you click this. And as you can see, we got 100% there, so we get this little screen saying, All Lemmings accounted for. You rescued 100%. You needed 10. Um, in this case, there were only 10, level, or 10 Lemmings in the level, so 10% was we only needed to save one Lemming, but of course you want to save as many as possible whenever you can. Um, but to pass the stage, you only need to save the requisite amount, which in this case was only one Lemming. So... That's not that difficult, so we're going to head on to the next level here. Here. Next level is only floaters can survive this, and as you can see, this screen here gives you sort of a overview of the level up at the top. It gives you the title, the level number, and a lot of things about the about the level that you're about to encounter, such as the number of lemmings, the percent to be saved, the release rate is 50, um, 99 is as high as it goes, and that's a limiting just every couple of seconds. And then the time, each level does have a time limit, and we won't encounter that a whole lot at the beginning here, because these levels are easy tutorial mode sort of things, so the time limit isn't really, isn't really something we need to worry about. Now, Lemmings, if they fall a certain distance, will splat, and this distance right here is sufficient for them to die if they fall off of this cliff. So therefore, we're going to assign them the floater skill, and unlike most of these skills, the floater and the climber skill, these first two here, um, 
both of those persist throughout the entire level. So once you create a floater, he will remain a floater for the rest of the level. And sometimes this can turn into a bad thing. And as you can see here, whenever I have one of them in the box, it says floater instead of walker, like this guy here who hasn't gotten a floater yet. But anyway, as he approaches the cliff, he's going to fall off. And instead of falling to his death, he's going to deploy a little umbrella to keep him from dying. And there we go. All ten of them have the umbrellas, and they are safe to go into the exit. So, so far, you know, this does this isn't really that challenging. And I believe the creators of the game said that it was one of the neat things about the game that, you know, a four-year-old could do this. And as it turns out, I did do this when I was four, just because this was one of the only games we had back then. Okay, tailor made for blockers. But yeah, so that's kind of the reason I'm doing this Let's Play is because this game means a lot to me because it was one of the ones that I played a lot as a kid growing up. So it's one of my earliest memories. So and it's a it's still a fun game to this day, you know. It's it celebrated its 20th anniversary this year. So this is um is released in 1991 and I'm recording this in 2011 so beginning part of this year um, is 20 years so um, anyway in this in this in this level you're introduced to the blocker skill which as you can see here when placed a blocker um, stays stationary and just blocks all of the other lemmings from proceeding past him um, whenever they they treat him just like a wall now that there's only um, let's turn the release rate up here so that the level goes by a little bit faster you can see when it's turned up to 99 they just pour out of the chute and of course this will end up becoming a difficulty thing you know this will become a source of difficulty later yeah a difficulty thing real eloquent there um, no it will become a source of difficulty later in the game where you you're going to have to contend with a lot of stuff going on at the same time and the lemmings are just pouring out of the chute so you know they, they give you a 50 release rate here which is a nice moderate clip but um, later they're not going to be so generous um, and the way that the um, blockers can be you can see there's the, the the blockers aren't being aren't like giving up and walking walking away even though there's no real reason for them to continue blocking the only way to remove a blocker or the easiest way to remove a blocker rather is to use the bomber task on it, which causes it to explode now we haven't been given any of these so we're going to have to use the armageddon or the nuke button down here at the end which blows up every lemming that's left in the level, including the blockers. Ah, there they go. And you can see they do leave a hole whenever they ex explode. Now, the, the thing about... There's also another way to remove blockers, which is to remove the dirt from under their feet, but we won't be doing that very often because there's not really much occasion to do that. So... It, it can come in handy sometimes. Okay, this level introduces the miner, which is this one here. The miner is the slowest of the digging tasks. See, there's the three at the end here. We, we already did the digger in the first level. The miner is the slowest, and he goes diagonally, as you can see. Now, to get up this vertical wall, we're going to use the climber skill, which, as you can see, has the guy climb. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a climber too so you can see that the climber skill is persistent just like the floater. Anytime he encounters a vertical surface that he can climb on, he will do so. Um, okay, he's already climber. And I'm going to let the rest of these guys just walk into the wall here because that makes it a bit faster. But see, he, cl he climbed up the wall, hit his head, fell back down, and now he's headed back this way and then we'll just give all these guys climbers. Interesting thing about this level is it's actually impossible to lose unless you um, run the clock out because the only way to get through this would be through a digging t tool and um, we already used the only digging tool we had up here so the only way to get this level over other than winning it is to 
run the clock out. But that's that's all that is. So okay, this one's this one's you need bashers this time, so we're gonna use our bashers, which are these down here, and they gave us fifty of them. You can see there's a few different tile sets in this game. Um, this one actually isn't used very often, but it's it's like crystal and ice and stuff. Um, it's probably one of the ones that's used. I think this one is actually the one that's used the least in the game. Um, we've already had two two of the Egypt um, tile set levels. We had one with the dirt and the ground at the beginning, and then the pastels were were the were used on the last one. This fencing here is kind of tricky because, as you can see, instead of bumping and turning around, they just go ahead and climb up the fence. They're going to be okay, but because see, there's just an obstacle over here they can bump into. And see, w since he loses his footing here, it's kind of hard to bash into it from anywhere other than the ground because then they just bash and they lose their footing and they fall down and then the bash the um, basher tool unapplies itself in, in that circumstance but they're just going to go back over the top here bump into this thing and then go back towards the exit and we can go ahead and turn the release rate up again because that's just a thing we like to do and yeah there's the tail end of those um, the music in this game is pretty interesting too. I'm not quite sure whether it's coming through or not on the video because this is sort of my first time recording using this software ever, so I'm not sure whether it's coming through or not. Um, but if you can't if if you can't hear it, it's the um, it's sort of this weird mix of the itsy bitsy spider and like the the wedding song and all this other stuff they used a lot of public domain music on this because you know it's it's cheap you don't have to worry about copyright and it's recognizable so like on this level a task for blockers and bombers we're going to have the can can playing and the bomber task does basically the same thing that the nuke button does, but just applied to one limbing only. And there's actually two ways of going about this level. The way that's intended is to use these blockers to stop the guy right up next to this so that you don't have to do um, timing. But it turns out I've played, uh, like I said, we've been playing this game almost since it came out maybe five we, st we got it maybe three or four years after it came out so I know that five seconds it takes a lemming five seconds to walk from right here to this post so I'm just going to take this unfortunate guy here blow him up and then as you can see he keeps walking even though he has that which makes it kind of tricky to time sometimes so you kind of want to avoid that as much as possible so, to, so as to not have to deal with timing issues there. But in this level, they give you a good little landmark right here. That's five seconds. And it it turns out we will re-encounter this level later. Um, this game does recycle its levels and gives you the only difference between them a lot of times between the first incarnation and the second is that you have different skills down here and in this case they'll only give you two bombers and no blockers so you have to do that that way the second time and a lot of people have said that you know it's kinda it's kinda cheap that they repeat the levels and you have to see things that you've already seen um, and I but I actually like that because in a way that's kind of neat forcing you to resolve a problem that you've already solved but in a different way and it kind of it kind of I don't know adds to the atmosphere of the game but we won't really see like the first 40 or 50 levels or so are going to be you know the first incarnations 
and a few of them don't repeat, of course. Like that that block that blocker level at the very beginning there on level three. We're never going to see that ever again. But this one we will see later on, and a lot of these early levels we will see later on in a much more difficult form. But we're not going to worry about that right now because we're just playing through the first incarnations of them. Oh, and I, I guess it's it's obvious, but I should point out. Whenever you do use a bomber on someone, he does die, so you can't save him. So that's why instead of getting 100%, we got 96 this time because we blew up two guys. But it was unavoidable, so I'm, I don't feel that bad about it. I mean, that's the way the game intended us to do this. So builders will help you here. And builders will help you here could really be the, the title of the whole game because builders are about the most important tool. Um, what a builder does is he actually adds ground to the level um, in the form of a bridge and I'm gonna start him back here so you can see um, see he builds up at an angle and it's always a consistent angle it's always I believe that's 30 degrees um, but he only has he only has 12 tiles so you'll see that bridge didn't get all the way to this step here because he ran out of tiles and whenever he's about to run out one more tile should get him across yeah there we go whenever he's about to run out of tiles then he makes this clicking noise and the that's that's like your warning to hey you've got a builder somewhere on the screen it's it's kind of it's kind of faint and difficult to hear sometimes but um, and we don't want anyone to fall in that pit, so I'm just going to kind of spam builders here to get everybody across because I don't really want to have to deal with fishing them out. It's possible if they fall in the pit to build like a zigzaggedy bridge up here, but I don't really want to mess with that because it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, there's there goes all the clicking. And it, you see they just run out of tiles and then they'll shrug and just wander off and do whatever. Um, and and again you know since you have only a finite number of builders that can turn into a huge obstacle where you know oh I could get across this pit and I have I could get across this pit if I had enough builders but you know each bridge is only so long so you end up running out of tiles and having to do things a, a more complicated way in a lot of cases but it's not Building isn't bad. Um, there is a lot of building in this game, though, and a lot of very long bridges and such. And it's not that bad. It just gets kind of tedious sometimes because, unlike it, like if you have a long tunnel, the guy will just dig and dig and dig or bash and bash and bash indefinitely, and you don't have to refresh him like you do the builder. So if you have a long bridge going on, you sometimes have to refresh him, and it turns into a chore kind of. Anyway, here's the next level, um, level 8, and that was the last tutorial level. At this point, you know, not as complicated as it looks. At this point, they're going to start giving you some, some different sort of challenges. In this case, it's just a, it's just a, you know, blocking challenge. Oh, they might fall in the hole. Well, well, we know how to solve that. We just put a blocker there and they just kinda go in there. The reason it's called not as complicated as it looks is I guess because you're supposed to look at all this stuff and be like holy crud how do I how do I do that I don't know what I'm doing Ah, there's all this stuff but it's not hard you just put a blocker and you're done see they all fall into the exit not that bad but Okay, let's let's turn up the release rate a little bit. Not that it makes much of a difference. 88 and 99 aren't that far from each other. So this maybe will save us a second. And we can go ahead and have him blow up. The way this game is organized, I didn't really touch on this, is the way the game is organized is there are 120 levels and they're split up into four difficulty categories, fun, tricky, taxing, and mayhem. Obviously these are the fun levels and it says on the, on the title slide for each level, see rating fun, 
once you beat um, level 30 of fun, the numbering resets with 1 and you go to the tricky rating. So 28 fun, 29 fun, 30 fun, and then 1 tricky, 2 tricky, 3 tricky, so on. All the way up to level 30 of mayhem. Okay. These these guys over here, these three things, these are shredders. If a lemming walks into it, they die. So we want to avoid that. And we're going to use the basher here to get through here but the problem is going to be while the while the um, tunnel is under construction people are going to be bumping into the end of it here see and they're going back the other way so what we need to do is get our blocker ready and as soon as this guy gets through boom okay and we have saved everyone they're just gonna hit the blocker and go this way so yeah, you know the the early the early levels of this look tremendously non-challenging and that's kind of the point, you know, they they want to give you a good difficulty curve and let you know, hey, this game is possible so that they can go along and totally shatter your hopes and dreams later, which oh, trust me, they will be doing. But so so far, you know, the fun the fun rating lives up to its name. Um they give you a lot of stuff to... I, I'm going to go for the 100% solution on this. It's not hard. Um, let's see. I'm going to do... See, the, the thick is a plank way to do this is to just give everyone a floater, stick a climber... Or, I'm sorry, stick a blocker down here at the end so that they don't run off of that. And then they go that way. That's, pr that's completely doable. Um, you have 20... Um, 20 lemming or 20 floaters here so you can do that and I think there's only 20 lemmings so that's that way is entirely possible but this way is a bit more fun because you get to save everyone and who like who doesn't like saving everyone I like saving everyone so I'm gonna do that um, so he's gonna float to the bottom uh, I'm gonna mine and this this gray patch down here is steel as you can see um, and whenever somebody runs into steel they just go clink and bounce off of it so and then he goes back the other way now we don't want to get a splat height situation going here so I'm just gonna go ahead and have him mine as well so everyone just sort of spills out down here and they shouldn't be able to walk over that. Yeah, no. That would have been kind of terrible if I would have gone through all that. And See, and then this way we save the blocker. We don't have to have a blocker. We can just use the steel here for that. Makes it a lot, a lot more tidy. And you don't have to kill people. And you get 100%. And you're like, yay, that's not worth anything. Because it doesn't matter if I get 100% or not because all I needed was 50 I could have killed half of them and still gotten the same you know the same outcome I don't get any points for saving any there's no points in this game I don't get points for saving extras this level introduces something kinda different um, you can see this wall here in the middle um, has these arrows pointing back towards the exit or back towards the entrance rather um, what that means is if you try to dig through it going this way dig digging towards the left if you try to bash into it towards the left from the left to the right you'll bounce off of it just like it's steel um, the only way to get through is to follow the arrows um, and I think you can dig down vertically but that wouldn't be terribly useful here so we're going to have a climber go here we're gonna have two climbers go and we're going to assign them both floaters because once they climb over the top of this and fall down this side they would they would just um, they just splat because that is that is the splat height there so they're gonna float down to the end here yay and I'm going to have him block because I don't want this guy to go ahead. He'll just keep, they'll both go to the exit indefinitely and we'll never get anywhere. So now I'm going to use my basher tool to bash this way. And then we can blow him up because he is no longer useful to us. And as you can see, if somebody is both a climber and a floater, they display as an athlete. So that's kind of useful terminology. 
Of course, he could also be an athlete that builds. Right now, he's an athlete that bashes, but it doesn't say that because, I don't know, they don't want to put bash leet or some sort of stupid portmanteau there. I don't know. I guess there's just, I guess it's just more important that he's an athlete than that he's a basher or whatever. And they all get to go to the exit and be nice, and then this guy just keeps climbing like a doofus, and he's he's just kind of the scraggler in life. He doesn't really, yeah, come on, come on, go, go, go. Some versions of Lemmings have a speed up tool where down on the th down on the the toolbox here there's a little arrow that you can click that makes the game go like double speed and the, the clock speeds up and then they walk faster too for situations like that but this version does not have that um, this is this is the original PC version that I'm playing here so that hadn't been invented yet of course the original version um, of this game was on the Amiga which um, you know doesn't really exist anymore so you see people playing the PC version okay now this is going to be the um, um, first instance of them using the 99 release rate well I, I take that back they, de they did use it as a hindrance on the on level 9 back there with the shredders this is the same sort of thing you're going to be built bashing a tunnel through this central obstacle here and you don't want people to fall off to the left because while the tunnel's under construction, while they're still bashing out the tunnel, they will bump into the end of it and go back the other way. So you're going to just be waiting here patiently at the end with a blocker so that that doesn't happen. And now we build our way out of this pit here to the exit and we should be good to go. The only issue, though, is that this they don't give you really enough room to start back here, so everybody just sort of piles on up here and, because this this isn't high enough for them to step over. But if you add another bridge, another layer to the bridge there, that gives them kind of the step, the, the boost that they need to get over the step. So there we go. Now we'll just kill this guy and call it a day. and there we go all right well I have been playing for about 20 minutes now so I think we may call that a day that's the first dozen levels of lemmings so join me next time for level 13 which is we all fall down and boy is this a terrible level not not like terrible is in hard just terrible is in but anyway, we'll cover that next time. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.